Okay, so here it is. It's all wired up now. I got all the wiring done and it turned out nice and neat. Uh, this is actually the silicon wire of the type that I, I recommended in the first video in the link. Uh, I actually recommended it because it happened to be the only one you could get in small lengths without you know, having to buy like 100 meters or something. Uh, and it's also extremely nice wire to work with and it's very heat resistant. Probably not exactly important on this, but you know, what the heck given the fact that it was pretty cheap. So we've got everything wired up and remember you go positive to negative, positive to negative, positive to negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. And I've used some color coded wiring, red for positive obviously at the end, just to make things a little bit more obvious for the video. And it's turned out very nicely. Now I got it nice and tight so there's not really any reason to do any more work with it. but. If you made it a bit loose and it's sort of flopping around, hanging down, that's not a problem. This is non-porous, but you can use something like silicon. Uh, it's just silicon sealant. Uh, pretty much any kind of industrial glue or even sticky tape. Sticky tape tends to come off after a while, so I'd use glue. But the epoxy is good as well. And uh, that'll hold it in place and make it neater if you have any problems. So what I thought we'd do... To finish this segment is fire up my power supply and uh, just make sure everything is working properly and obviously being careful to make sure that nothing shorts out this being aluminum it you have to make sure that these are not touching the uh, the aluminum where they're short out so let's uh, turn the voltage down fire it up it's going to take about a hundred volts this power supply is uh, quite powerful It'll go up to 120 volts. It's going to probably take close to 100 volts to get this actually to uh, light up. Let's see. Hang on. Right, 45 volts. So this is a like 10 turn potentiometer. So it takes a while to uh, get up here. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, they're all working now. I'll take it up. At the moment, it's only like 3 milliamps. Okay, going up. Ooh, okay, let's get my arm out the way. And uh, starting to see some. This is 10%. So, camera's adjusting here. We're up to, uh, ooh, yeah, that's nice and bright. This is only 50% uh, power and uh, it's sitting directly under uh, like 50 watt light that I've got overhead. It's one of my workbench lights. Let's take it all the way up. Actually, while we're at it, let's do a quick check and just see what kind of temperature we get off of there. Okay, I'm running it up to, at the moment it's 640, 650. 660, come on, let's go up to 700. Okay, that's 700 milliamps, and it is really bright. The camera's obviously compensating for the brightness. Uh, but to give you an idea, I'm going to unplug the uh, light that's overhead. That's a 50 watt light overhead, and as you can see, it doesn't make a heck of a lot of difference. <laughs> So, I'll put that back on so I can see what I'm doing. Uh, so, that is a really nice bright light. I'll let it run for a couple of minutes and uh, we can see what the temperature is going to be like. Okay, this has been running for five minutes. I'm going to turn the power off because basically it's blinding me. Okay, let's see what the temperature is. Okay, the room in here is absolutely freezing. It's like uh, 15 degrees. But anyway, the th thermometer is reading 18 degrees. Even right close, right next to the, the LEDs, it's reading 17.6. Let me see this here. Yeah. Uh, in the middle, it's reading, yeah, about the same. Right up next to the LEDs. 18 and a half over here. Bring this in close. Yeah, you can see that. It is running really nice and cool. And uh, to give you an idea how bright it is, because the, the camera ov obviously compensates for the light, I'm going to lock the exposure now and turn this back on. Yeah. 
Now this light, this room is very brightly lit. This is my uh, hobby workshop, and uh, it's got uh, over 150 watts of LED lights in here, uh, lighting the room. And you can see even over that, this is just completely blinding the camera. So I'm going to shut this off again because all I can see is lots and lots of little dots. Now. So this is a really nice build. It's working really well. It's keeping everything really nice and cool. Uh, absolutely brilliant. So what I'm going to do is, next is mount the power supply. And that's pretty much the final step. There is going to be one additional video because I'm going to do an upgrade of this before I finish. At the moment, I'm just going to wire the power supply directly onto everything and put a mains lead on it. And I'm going to show you an alternative method uh, where I'm going to put a nice power connector. I'm going to mount one of these on there in the last video. Uh, so you can actually daisy chain the light. And I'm going to put some actual connectors in here instead of uh, just pushing the cable through. So make it look a little bit more professional, but that's completely unnecessary. I'm just doing it because I can. Uh, I'm also going to be using a 3D printer to make some mounts for the power supply. But anyway, this is uh, looking really, really good. I'm very pleased with it. And uh, so next stage is to finish everything off. I'm now ready to mount the power supply. I've drilled this out ready to uh, bolt the power supply in. Now, I could just screw it straight onto here. Having tested the heat level, it's well, it's very, very low. And I'm just going to mount a couple of washers. There's two washers in a stack here uh, underneath the power supply just to lift it off a little bit. Now, the reason I, there's, there's any concern at all uh, with mounting the power supply slightly off the base is that heat kills power supplies. The one thing in here in any LED grow light that's likely to go is the power supply. Now, the reason for that is that uh, one of the components in here, capacitors, they use a electrolytic, quite a large electrolytic capacitor in here, and that's a critical component. component. If they get too hot, they die, and basically they degrade with heat anyway, so you want to keep it as, as cool as possible. And if this was hotter, then you would definitely need a spacer. For example, if you had another row of LEDs in here, this turned out, by the way, uh, don't you if you noticed earlier the reading on the power supply when I ran it to full power it worked out at uh, I think it was 105 106 volts at 700 milliamps which works out at about 75 watts which is almost exactly what I expected it to be if I'd put more leads in here and this thing was running around uh, 40 degrees or something then 40 45 degrees it would be a good plan to, to have a bit more space on here you could use for example a block of wood going under each end and raising it a couple of centimeters, an inch, whatever, off of the, the top of the light, just to, to keep it cool. Uh, you don't want to put a, a solid object in there, like a solid piece of wood. You want to leave it open to the, the top to dissipate heat as much as possible. Again, because of the power rating compared to the area of this, it's not a big, it's not a problem. I could easily just screw this straight on, but I just figured, you know, for the price of four washers or eight washers, let's uh, just raise it up a little bit. So now I'm going to bolt it on and next we can look at uh, connecting the wires up. Okay, as you can see, I've mounted the the power supply on there and we've got it all uh, set up. We've got, you can see that there's a nice gap in here. It's probably uh, about a centimeter between the power supply and the top. Just let a little air flow through and stop this from getting any hotter than necessary. Uh, I've already fed the cable through the hole I drilled earlier into here. Also made sure that there was no sharp edges on that. That's quite important. Although on this, there's no any movement, so you don't have to worry too much about the aluminum cutting through the, the cable. This is pretty thick uh, plastic as well. And as you can see, I fed the, the cable through to this side here. Now, you've got a couple of choices when you join these wires up together. Uh, on these, by the way, blue is, there we go, blue is negative, brown is positive on these. There's several ways you can attach the wires onto here. You can solder it and either wrap it with uh, electrical tape. Make sure you use decent quality electrical tape. A lot of the cheap stuff you buy in the one pound shops, the 
glue breaks down reasonably rapidly, goes soft, and the tape will fall off after about a year. And you don't want that because uh, you could short out, damage, damage the power supply or the LEDs. Or you can use this type of thing. This is made by Waco. They're called Waco connectors. This is a two-way one. You have two wires. You put one on each side. The way they work is you flip the little lever down like this and put the wire in and then snap the lever back into place and it'll lock it in place. This is good. These are good. They're uh, very easy to use. They are pretty uh, give a pretty good grip onto the wire. The one thing I'd recommend is if you use something like this on the power cable, when you attach it to the power supply, that you loop the cable round and use a couple of twist ties to connect the two cables together. Uh, I'll show you in a minute what I'm talking about because that way if you accidentally tug on the power cable, you're not putting any stress on this. So you don't want to pull that loose and have it touch the, the casing, make it go live, or the two of them touch and blow out a fuse or whatever. And the third method is one of these things. These are dirt cheap. You can buy them in any, any shop. And they use screw, screw on connectors. You just put the wire through and tighten down the little screws on the top. And uh, let's see if you can see them in there. Yeah, it's pretty hard to tell. Probably a bit close. Anyway, and uh, sure, most of you have seen this sort of thing before. And again, same warning as before, if you use these on the main side, uh, if you use them on the main side, make sure that you use some cable ties to hold the power cable for the same reason. Now, for this, uh, for the time being, I'm just going to use these, one of these, I haven't made my mind up yet, uh, for the simple reason that I'm planning on putting a little plastic insert in here and making a using the same sort of uh, connector that I use on the lights and that means that if I'm going to put this up for sale after I finished with the videos uh, I'll make him make it pretty cheap uh, just recover some of the cost of the parts and that'd be great if someone doesn't want to go through all the work of making this doesn't have a drill but uh, power drill solder iron and everything and it means that if there's a problem in the future with the power supply you can just uh, contact me and I can send you one a replacement with the connector on the end and you can just snap it into place in a couple of minutes so I'm going to uh, I can't really do this in in front of the the camera because it's a bit awkward and you wouldn't be able to see what I'm doing anyway. So I'm just going to connect this up and we'll carry on from there. Well, I decided to use these uh, screw terminals as you can see. Let's lift this up a little bit and that's nicely done. Now, as I said, I'm, I'm planning on changing this uh, later on after I finish this video, so I've just left it as it is. But that's more than sufficient. You can leave it like that if you wanted to. Now it's over to here. And we're going to do the same thing, attaching the power cable onto here. Right, we've got this done. We've got these, uh, you decided to use these clips here. And let's move this in a little bit. And there we go. I decided to use these clips, as you can see, to join the wires together. And this is what I meant by putting a cable, cable tie. This way, no matter how much you pull, it doesn't put any stress on these connectors here. Now, the screw type like I used on on this wire here are probably actually neater and uh, than these ones are because these are quite bulky as you can see, but it doesn't really matter. Now, I've left it like this rather than doing something else for the simple reason that I plan on putting uh, a standard connector on and enable a daisy chaining in case you want to make uh, your own light like this and uh, so you can hook several together and I'm going to be doing another very short video in a few days I've got a lot of work on at the moment that's built up over the holidays uh, and then I'll I'll do that so I've left this as it is and I'm going to modify it a little bit more uh, I'll probably shorten these I've also put it yeah I should mention that I've put the ring bolts on the corners and uh, I'm going to actually run those down further so that they're right flush with the top. It's just these are quite long. I might uh, take an angle grinder and cut them off, make them shorter. And I'm going to push this, put this down flush with the, uh, more flush with the top. And that is it. We now have a fully functional 75 watt 
LED grow light. And if you follow the directions, you too can make your own. Now, I'll be putting this up for sale when I've finished modifying it. And I'll put it up for slightly less than the cost of the components, uh, if anyone's interested in buying it. As I said, I'm going to tidy it up, do a few more things I'll cover in, in the next very short, sort of like 5-10 minute video. So, I hope you've enjoyed this series of videos, and I hope you've learned something. It's not nearly as difficult to make a light like this as you might have thought, and it's of course more satisfying to do it yourself. You can also make the light exactly the way you want it, and save quite a lot of money, and for not much more than the price of a crappy one of those 1,500 watt uh, eBay or Amazon lights, which are actually only 60 watts, you can have one that's much better, will last you much longer, and of course, because you've built it this way, it's very, very easy for you to modify it, repair it, or anything else, whereas the other ones, <laughs> no, you can't. So, once again, if you've enjoyed the videos, please click like, please click subscribe, and any comments are always welcome. And now I've got a bit more, I'll make some time in the evenings to... Uh, check and see if I've had any comments and uh, any questions and reply to them. So thank you very much for watching and happy growing.